It's time for Morning Soul Shine with Bridget, a podcast where we interview people who express their stories of triumph. I'm your host, Certified Life and Mindset Coach, Bridget Gibson. It's Bridget, and I'm back. We're in season two of Morning Soul Shine, and I'm just so excited. Season one was amazing. Amazing. We got so much great feedback from season one that we decided to come back and do a season two. And I'm so excited about this season because we have a very special person with us tonight. Man, guys, y'all going to be so excited about this, this premiere. Um, my guest tonight is Tony Richard. And guys, Tony is one of the best artists that I have ever seen. He is a rapper. He is a poet. You know, I met Tony back in 2013. And what happened, what had happened was I was on, uh, I think it was Instagram or Facebook. And I had seen him doing some, um, some different art and spoken word. And I reached out to him and I sent him like a DM and I was like, hey, I have an event coming up for domestic violence. Would you be interested in doing spoken word for me? And he was like, oh, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. And guys, from 2013 until now, this guy has blown up. When I tell you, when you allow God to use you, you see, we're going to have church in here this morning, tonight. When you allow God to use you, God can take you from beginning all the way up. This guy has been on, um, you're going to have to help me with all of this, Tony, because you've been on know. so I, many I, different yeah. things. You yeah. have music on Spotify, iHeartRadio. You just, okay. So we're getting ready to do this interview. And tonight we're going to talk about growth. And Tony is such a great person to put words together. And Tony, I want to welcome you to Morning Soul Shine with Bridget. And thank you so much for being here. What's up, Miss Bridget? <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor. Appreciate it. Yes, Tony. So let's talk about growth. I remember when you and I met in 2013. Take me back to 2013 and, you know, let us know what you were doing back then. Oh, 2013. Ooh, I was in a dark place. 2013, I was staying my, my aunt. Uh, I was, ooh, that was a dark place. I think I had just started bay painting. I wasn't, ta- I was tattooing as well. I, I think I had just not too long quit from the tattoo shop, I believe. So, yeah, 2013, I must say, just, just quit. Um, I was just starting to rap a little bit. Um, that's really it. I wasn't working. I wasn't, I didn't have a call. I was, I was, it was, it was just a rough, it was a rough time. Um, and you but know, I, I remember y'all remember, coming. I remember y'all picking me up. Go ahead. Yep. Yep. I remember that we went to y'all. I'm telling you, this guy here is so humble. And, um, I remember we did the, the event in Crawley and Tony came out and he did some painting for us. He drew some stuff for people who were out there and everything, just so gracious and did the spoken word. He brought people with him and it was just amazing. And so then we had a trip that we took to Natchitoches. We were invited to a company over there who allowed their employees to come into the room and um, hear about domestic violence. And Tony just jumped in and said, Miss Bridget, I'll ride with y'all. And Mm-hmm. And I tell you, that trip was amazing. We were riding to Natchitoches, and we can just feel the spirit of God in the car. And I just kept telling Tony, I said, Tony, I just, it's something about you. I feel, Tony, you remember that? Yes, ma'am. I, I said, actually Tony, do. I, I, I actually feel, do remember that. I know. I just felt the presence of God. Oh, my God. I felt the presence of God in that car all the way to Natchitoches. We get to Natchitoches. Um, you know, we go to dinner uh, with uh, my pastor who was over there, Pastor Altorio Holden. And he and Tony sat there and just had this conversation about God the whole time. And so on the way back, the spirit of God was still in the car. And I was just, I just could, I could still feel it now, Tony. I could feel the presence of God that was all over you. And so, okay, now you're going to take us back to the story. 
Go back to <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Go back and tell us because I'm getting excited in here. I just I remember I just remember specifically um going I remember you picking us up. I remember us leaving. I remember I do remember you saying that there was another lady in the car with us, right? Yeah. The sister Linda was riding with us. Correct, correct. She was a so domestic was, violence survivor. Correct. It was so it was us three in the back. It was y'all two in the front. I do remember speaking to yo, I think it was your pastor. I believe so, right? Yep, it and was my was, pastor. Was, yeah, I remember he took us to lunch. Yeah, yeah, facts. Okay, so this is the guy. So I remember, wow, I could see it vividly now. What did we eat? Did we eat pizza that day? What did no, we go we eat? went to uh, <laughs> we went to that little steakhouse. What was it like? A little golden correct? Room? Yeah, correct. like a little trail boss. Yeah, correct. We went to a steak. So I remember him specifically um, telling me, and this is always registered with me. He was like, I, I don't believe, I believe that it'll be a time whenever rap will be before praise and worship. But like, it's going to come a time where people going to be rapping on stage. And it's crazy because that it, I've seen it happen. I've witnessed it actually happen. So uh, I remember that. I remember whenever we did the skit, I remember going to the, I think it was the chicken factory. It was some type yep, of factory. Yeah, we went to the chicken and factory. I, and you yeah. remember they let us allow the employees to come in the break room. Correct. And they sit there that. and watch the that was amazing right there. I was <laughs> I felt so shame because I had to be the abuser. So I was <laughs> uh, I, I was so shame. Like <laughs> I was like I, I was like, how do is really be doing this? I I, don't, I really not because I feel shame just within myself, just trying to play this in front of all of these women. That's like it was like it was like a man trying to because it's because we're acting. It's like a man trying to beat on a woman in front of a room of like 30 women. But do you realize <laughs> how but do you realize how important that was, Tony? Yeah, face, face, face. Because I had to, I had you to, yeah. allowed yeah. them to see outside of themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. You let them see this is what's going on in your house. And you can't see it because you're in the middle of it. But now you're sitting back and you watching this. This is not a good place to be you know yep. and god used you to just i mean you god used you and god touched people that day in a company you know it wasn't in church yep. it was at a company and that was oh god and so but tony so when we did that drive and we felt the presence of god and at the time you were kind of like oh okay miss bridget <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Tony, God is all over you, you know. And you was like, Okay, Miss Bridget. And <laughs> but did you feel it? <laughs> did you feel that at that time? I I, I don't. And I, I I've heard that before. I've had I've had like a, a minister come to me before and even be like, uh, he'll, he touched me. He was like, Oh, like you got all. I don't. I don't remember everything he said. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. It just sounded. <laughs> It just was like it was like I don't feel this. Whatever it is, I don't feel it. Um, but I do. I believe. I believe. I, it's people that I have believed, and I do believe you are for sure one of the people that were telling the truth about it. And as well as the pastor, I do believe that because he would not let me leave his church. He nope. did, he he was trying to he was trying to buy me stuff. He was trying to buy me a truck. He was like, please don't go back to Houston. I was like, you need transportation. You need a job. You need woo. Like, I got to go. I remember it. And that was the last thing he told me. He was like, I just feel this all on you, though. Like, I don't want to let you. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, but Tony, when God has, uh, uh, when he, God has his hands on you and you knew you had to go back, you knew you had to go back. Yeah. And it's like everything that he was telling you, like, don't go back, don't go back. But it was all part of the plan, right? Yes, ma'am. So what For happened sure. when you went back to Houston? Uh, when I came back to Houston, I started, when I, I remember, I, let me say this, I remember I was leaving, I was about to leave Lafayette, and I had just started doing, I had just kind of started taking music serious. So the first thing I said was, I prayed, I said, well, God, I'm going to do music in Houston if you know, my recording studio here, I, I'm, I'm tattooing, I'm, everything is coming, everything is playing out to where I can record in Lafayette. Let me just stay in Lafayette. And my sister called me, and she knows a guy that I went to college with, <laughs> which was so, which is so strange. 
she knew a guy that I went that she ended up meeting a guy that I went to college with, and he had a studio. And when so when I got to Houston, she introduced me to him, and that's how I ended up meeting my producer Kalani, who I've been working with still to this day. As a matter of fact, just last week I was at Kalani Studio doing a, a video for one of my friends I have a song with. So that worked out like instantly. I mean, like a couple, if, if it wasn't the same day, it was like the same week uh, right before I was about to leave to Houston. I got a phone call. My sister was like, do you know such and such? And I was like, yeah. She was like, yeah, he got a studio. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, he got a studio? So I just automatically, that was the first move. The second move was I already had some other state. My pastor's, my pastor's dad had been begging me to come back to Houston. He was just like, come back to Houston. There's nothing out there for you. Uh, and I felt like my season was up. It, just, it was just, like I said, it was a dark time. It was a dry season. I didn't really know what what all was next for my life. I didn't feel like I was making progress. I kind of felt like I was just stuck. Um, and I ended up moving back in with him. And then... The music started, and then I started back painting, and I mean, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And 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 God blessed you with. You got to tell us about these beautiful people. God blessed you with. Yeah, my I have so I have my my daughter Sam and my number one, my wife, um, Aisha. I met Aisha when I got back. I was still doing spoken word. I don't do it anymore, but I used to do spoken word, and. I met her through the guy who put on the show through Spur Spoken Word. She came to, um, she was coming to, why did she come? She wanted to like do like outreach. She wasn't like an actual poet. She just wanted to do outreach and find something else, something extracurricular to do. Mm -hmm. You know, serve God outside of, because she was already a nurse. She had just finished school. Um, so we ended up meeting at Starbucks on the north side. Um, and i never forget, um, I had asked, we was, we, she had took a picture of us, of the entire group, but everybody, everybody had, and some people had Androids and some people had iPhones. So when we all put our numbers in, it all looked like one big number. So I had to walk up to her afterwards and be like, hey, this is my number. Like, just can you send me this picture, whatever, because she had took, it was another picture that I took specifically with the person that was over the, uh, the event. Mm -hmm. it's called uh it's called a block and um after that i texted her i kept texting her and then i mean i don't know i don't know how i don't know how, how long you want me to go but i i kept texting her we kept talking and i'm just she, happy she, that you're happy i want you to talk yeah oh yeah 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 definitely she um she kept she kept um responding like back to my text message i was like you know what church you go to and blah 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 and, she thought she was like, oh, you was trying to get my number and you was trying to grill me. And like she would tell people, she tells that people this day. And I don't know <laughs> if she really believed it or if she jokes about it. But it's like, nah, it really, it really wasn't like that. It really was like, <laughs> it really was like, hey, like, you know, we in a group together. Who are you? I'm Tony. You know, I really, <laughs> well, Tony, I really wasn't. Let's let her, let, let's let her believe it, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. I did. And I do, I do. I'll be like, yeah, go ahead. You believe that story as much as you want to believe that story. But we got here today because I'm just fly like that. It don't have nothing to do with, it don't have nothing to do with what you, <laughs> let me stop, let me stop. But anyway, so we got, we got real tight. We got married. Um, a long line. She was a blessing. She, she literally elevated me. I had just jumped out of a situation um, prior, a very long situation in my life with somebody and it probably maybe have been maybe like six or seven months before I had talked to anybody else and boom I had been praying and praying for a helpmate for a wife and I, I got what I prayed for it's the you truth sure I got exactly what I prayed for so you sure did yeah. and she is beautiful and your little girl is beautiful and Thank God you. is amazing I'm just so proud to know you Tony um mm -hmm. so Tell us about, okay, so what you, you told me that you were like throwing everything in into your art right now. Uh, I'm correct. Right now, I'm just, right now, I'm mainly focused on just painting. Um, I just, I don't know, this year I've gotten way more commissions than what I usually do. So like in a year, uh, let's say I get, let's say in a year I get maybe like nine or 10 commissions. 
this year has been like maybe 20, 20 something, 30 something commissions. It's like I'm constantly getting commission for paying. So mm. I didn't really have time to focus on anything else. And I did not know, and this and this is this is this is a guesstimation. This isn't a fact. Um, but I believe that I caught COVID um earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I believe that is because I went to see a friend of mine and he told me that his uncle had been having issues when he had COVID with his memory. Okay. His long-term and his short-term memory um had it was bad. And his like his comprehension was off. He said something like um, his, his his uncle would be in front of the TV with the remote to his keys, like trying to change the channel. Like he, he would just forget things that fast. So he wouldn't understand why he'd be like what that's. And that's one thing like you would have to really you would really have to to be me and him to really understand it. Like you would literally grab something and not like, why did I even pick this up? Like and it's, it's like, nah, you was really about to go to your car before you. But since you're in front of your TV now, you just automatically think that you're supposed to be changing the channel. Like it, it got bad like that. So I had the same, I had the same exact problem. My short-term memory and my long-term memory failed me completely. I literally thought I was losing my mind. Um, my comprehension, I couldn't comprehend much. And it what happened is the reason why I'm saying this is because I couldn't write. I would forget things so fast, I literally couldn't write anymore. I couldn't write music no more. I, if I tried to remember a flow pattern, or I tried to, you know, go rap, it was like, I just couldn't rap. I couldn't catch a rhythm. Like it literally, it, and I what I believe, I really believe I caught COVID and just didn't know. Cause I didn't, you know, I didn't have the issues of probably like taste or smell or just yeah, feeling yeah. super sick. You know, I didn't get that. But what I did get was the worst thing I could have ever got when it came down to my gifting. Oh, and my yes. ability and my talent and something that I've used to vent and pour out and balance my life out for so long. So it's like, yeah, that was a that point, was an attack from the devil. Man, man, like, yeah, man. So, so how are you now with your? Um, have you started to rap a little? I bit have, more? I have, I have. I my memory is. I say my memory is back. Like, um. I say my memory is probably back like maybe 80, 80, 85 percent now um, compared to like 15 wow, <laughs> percent. Well, well, we yeah, gonna, was we gonna continue praying for you because we yeah. know that that's a that is your anointing. You know, yeah. we know that's part of your anointing. Not, that's not all your anointing. That's part of your anointing. And, yeah. you know, with the art and God has just gifted you so much. You know, so much. So, Tony, can you maybe elaborate on growth? You know, talk to us about growth. Growth is, oh, can I be, I don't want, I don't know if I want to be that, that um, graphic. Let me not do that. I think that growth is, uh, you remember the situation that I told you about the home? Me and you were just talking about a home situation yes, before we yes, started. Okay. Yes. So growth is oh for real, baby. That's the news that they told you. Um, they told you that they want they want this amount, this amount much more for this square foot that we already paying. We might as well go. It's not worth it. And then and then and then the enemy comes and says something like uh uh too bad you don't have the extra whatever you need because now you gotta go back and look for a house. Now um you're not getting a brand new house. Um now um you gotta stay where you are. You you, you know you, you you had your family's uh feelings excited. Then you get blindsided by other things that's going on in life. Like let's just, like just just overall just um attacks and issues is coming all over from different people like and it's and it's literally just a mind game and to be attacked if if you want to really attack a man attack him in a way as to make him feel insecure about how his family feels about him yeah but listen but growth is the first thought of, you know what? I don't, I don't really care. I'm gonna be Job in this situation. I'm not even, a, I'm not about to, 
I'm not about to feel insecure. Mm -hmm. I'm not about to um, raise my voice. I'm not about to catch a fit. I'm not about to get upset with these people. I'm not about to do anything just crazy. I'm about to keep my cool. I'm about to be well balanced. I'm about to be self-controlled. I'm about to be vigilant because, oh, then then you've never seen your daughter bleed the same day she ma she magically stumbles upon a glass that that slices a a, a big chunk of her toe the same day like yeah like I mean I'm if I just if I said and explained to you the whole I'm so glad you said I'm glad you used the word that you used the there's so many things that was going on yesterday that was just like just hitting me I just was getting just punched all day and I was like man you know what when I woke up today, I say, I say, I passed that test. That's growth because <laughs> uh, because an older an older version of me would I just would have lost it. I would have been mad. I'd have been so upset. I'd have been because you have to keep in mind too. This isn't like oh we just said we going to get the we're oh we're building a house and that's it. No, like we've been waiting for months. We've been waiting and they've pushed it back for months. So it's like it's so many things where that'll be set up to test you or to tempt you. Are you being tested? Why are you being tempted? Because that's what it kind of seems like with my life. It seems like I'm being tested while I'm being tempted. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's like, man. Because, you like, know, and I'm because not... God has such a great anointing on your life. God has such, and you know, that word growth did not come to me until we start talking. So God wanted you to share this. That's crazy. He wanted you to share this. That's crazy. I do, I do, I do feel like I feel like growth. I feel like I'm definitely in the in the season where the enemy is trying to confuse me, and I feel like I've I'm grown. I'm starting to see um, things just differently, and that's a part of growth. When you start, when you when you mature, you know I'm thirty. I'm thirty one now. So when you met me, you said two thousand and fourteen, right? Thirteen. Thirteen. So I was twenty three when you met me. Mm -hmm. I'm thirty one now. Whew, time fly. I'm 31. <laughs> I'm 31 now. <laughs> so it's like all of the all of the things that I've gone through and all the times that I've reacted and all the times that I have even out of character. And I'm, I'm not, let me not say that. Let me not say that because I was in my character. That was my character. My character was where it is. But to watch myself grow completely to you know this place now um it's, it's that's what it feels like it feels like growth and it, and it was so many things in my life that made me just want to quit there's so many times where I just was like I threw in the towel was so many times I was mad at God it was so is I, I literally told my aunt on the phone yesterday um I said man just the way that the way that you know um my life has been the way that my life has been set up um it just constantly seems like I'm always getting blows. I'm always getting blows. But I told her, I said, it's going to come a time real soon where it's just, everything's just going to flood. Because I didn't just been through, I didn't been through so much. Mm -hmm. I didn't fought so much. I've, I've, I have done, I personally feel like I've done a lot. And it's not so much as, look, it's not a God owes me thing. No. It's a, it's a, I know that God going to bless me because there's no way, there's no way I would have, I just, it's, it's been a lot <laughs> to get here. <laughs> or, I mean, even like, even, even the different things that God has gifted me with, you got to think of all the different arenas and people I've been around and, and things that I've seen and how God had to prepare me for that. To be on stage, open up for Frankie Beverly and Mays, to open up for Sway, to be able to rap, to be able to paint, to be able to do spoken word, to have a, a wonderful family, to just all all the responsibility. I've been I've literally worked for a billionaire um, who I was selling paintings to, who told me to come work for him as an assistant, uh, his personal assistant, just driving him around, was paying me was paying me a ridiculous amount of money to do this just when he came in town. And when he was out of town, he still was like I've I've seen and done so many things and I've had to be prepped. And have had to grow so much to fit in these certain mm -hmm. venues and places is is it's a lot. But you know, I need Tony, to write a book. it it started, <laughs> you know, it started as far as I'm concerned, when you obeyed the word of God, when God said to you, 
go ahead and do that for Miss Bridget, you know, and God, I just know your humbleness, your, you know, you were like, no problem. You know, you didn't know me. <laughs> you didn't know me. This is a crazy woman that's reaching out to you on, you know, on Facebook. <laughs> but you were, you know, you were just like, okay, let's get it done. Let's do it. Yeah. And you got in there and you also had a testimony about domestic violence also. Um, once you got there, which I didn't realize that you, you know, you had went through some stuff. Your family had some stuff going on and you, you got up there and you told your story and that was a blessing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was a blessing. And, yes, um, ma'am. I really just really appreciate you and I just respect your growth. I don't know if you remember the book you were reading. You had brought a book with you. I don't remember the, the book car. I was reading. Which one? To, to which one? To it, the one. It was it uh Lewis. What was it must have been C. S. Lewis. Yes. I must have been reading C. S. Yes, Lewis. Yeah, you was reading C. S. Lewis. And you know, I just I can remember that car ride because I just felt the spirit of God in that car. When we were going, uh, when we were going our, north Louisiana, when yep. I came when we were going to north okay. Louisiana, okay, yeah, and we had that. Yeah, I was, we, was the, we had the discussion about it. We were talking about it. I, I and I'm trying to remember what book it was though, because I mean I've had I've had so many C.S. Lewis books. I'm trying to remember which one I was reading. Uh, it's so long time ago, but I I know it because it could have been was it a quote book or was it a story book. I don't know. It seemed like it was, um, I don't know, because you had, you was given some really good points out of it. And that's kind of how the discussion started. Oh, and as we okay. were talking about, you know, the book, that's when and we just, I just felt the spirit of God come in the car. And I just like this guy here, God has <laughs> a big plan for his life, you know, because of the way God was using you to explain what you were reading, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so Tony, I'm still, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm still curious. Not to cut you off, I'm still curious as to what's next. I'm, I'm so curious. I want to. You know what? And I'm following. <laughs> you. I'm following you because I want to see. <laughs> I want to see what's next for you. I'm so excited for you. I know God has great plans for you, and um, yes, I'm just like, gosh, you all grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> with a wife and a baby and yeah yeah doing all this yeah. wonderful stuff and i seen that you had some art in uh one of the museums um was it in dallas i had a i had a um i had art in houston at district arts gallery um downtown i think it's down yeah it's downtown houston okay and I've had my art in there a couple of times. Right now, I still have a piece in there that I did for them. Um, but I've had my I've had my work in a couple of galleries. I've done a couple of art shows, but most of my art is commissioned. It's just so many people that just commission me. So I I rarely really have to leave leave from home unless it's something that I really have to do. Like when it comes down to working, I'm I'm at home painting full time. Wow! So that's that a blessing. Is that's a, that's blessing. a blessing. Yes, it that's is. A it's blessing. a blessing. That Man, is such a blessing. a blessing. Well, Tony, I am so happy that you were with us today. And I'm so proud of you. And I couldn't <laughs> think you. of anybody else I wanted to start this season with because we're going into Domestic Violence Month, the month of October. That's and true. you started this off with me back in 2013. And I That's said, true. I got to call Tony. <laughs> and you was like, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> thank yes, you so man. much oh it's not a problem thank you so much for even interviewing me thinking about me and i pray that you have a wonderful and awesome day you too tony and i love you and i love your wife and i love your daughter and i'm praying for you guys and god has such a blessing for you and you've been listening to morning soul shine with bridget and tony richard Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again next week. Thank you so much. You're welcome.